Gail and I were both home for Thanksgiving break. She was excited because upon her return to Auburn, she had a first date with a cute boy. He had shared two books with her, The Giving Tree and The Velveteen Rabbit. Fast forward, well, before that, after, the, after reading them myself, I knew this boy must be very special. Fast forward over 40 years, because the boy I eventually met and came to know as my brother-in-law really did not change over time. He didn't need to. Many of us consider him our one constant. 2015. After decades of short visits, holidays, special trips, and correspondence from afar, I decided to retire and move to South Car from South Carolina to Clifton Forge. John and family would be my neighbors. Shortly before midday, I came up to go with John to the Christmas home tour. I texted him when I got close, as instructed, and he told me he would meet me at my house. As I drove up, sure enough, he was putting new light bulbs into the fixtures in front of my home to be. Hanging from his forearm, much like he carried his Kroger basket on his daily shopping trips, was a beautiful Christmas wreath intended for my front door. He put the base of the second light bulb between his teeth and offered me a side hug with his mouth free arm. John then felt all of his pockets and said he didn't know where he put the tickets for the home tour. <laughs> we went to their house to retrace his steps. He found the tickets and made me promise I wouldn't tell Gail I had seen the inside of their garage. But he found <laughs> John hopped in his truck. I went to the passenger side, but there was no room for me or even my tiny ticket. <laughs> As his truck was obviously his mobile office. John remembered we'd be picking up Gail, who was working the home tour, so we moved to their car and were off to meet my soon-to-be friends and neighbors. Several days later, I returned to Clifton Forge for good, and my belongings were to arrive the following morning. I got up early to take my dog for a walk, and upon our return, with no one in sight, there on my front step was the most perfectly brewed mug of coffee with just the right, the right amount of cream. And so it went, as it always was, John just being John. My mother, who was no slacker, used to say when she was overwhelmed, that John makes everything look so easy, nothing is too hard for him. Well, Ethan is a great problem solver, too. Within the next few months, he and I took on some do-it-yourself projects, and whenever we hit a snag, he would immediately say, I'm calling Dad. <laughs> if Ethan felt responsible for the gym we were in, he'd quickly look at me and say, you call Dad. <laughs> that was nothing new, because John had been my emergency contact for years, and he still is. During one such project, Ethan and I broke off a screw that had repeatedly come loose in the kitchen cabinet. I did an online search on how to make the repair. I called John to see if he had the tool I needed in that garage of his. He came over and went to work, sitting on my kitchen floor for several hours and returned home to get whatever materials he needed that I did not have. His back had been bothering him recently, so I often asked him if he was okay. He would just give me that look that some of you have also been privy to, and it's not as well-known smile. As always, John did not stop until the task was completed to his satisfaction. Several days after John died, a piece of little wooden dowel he had used in the repair a year earlier fell out of my kitchen cabinet. I recall John telling me he was going to leave it there, saying, you may need this yet. I remember making some crack like, but where will you be? I don't remember his answer, but that explained a lot about John's garage, the truck passenger seat, packed refrigerator, the Stewart building, etc. <laughs> In each location, he must have thought to himself, you may do this yet. Many Christmases ago, John gave several of us music boxes, my plays decked the halls, which is so fitting as it was the last Christmas song I heard him sing to the rest of us during the family game this past year. 
You can picture his head sway from side to side with that smile on his face as he sang in his voice every la 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 la. <laughs> Before putting it away after the holidays, I wound up my new music box and it began to play its little heart out. Before slowing, and then the mechanism within stopped before the song was finished. It was so symbolic. This was our greatest fear. Soon it was Easter, and rather than taking candy to the hillers, I took guns and game, or took toys, toys and games we enjoyed as children. While loading my cart in the summer fun aisle at Walmart the previous Friday, I spotted an extraordinary five pack of squirt guns in various sizes. There was one very large gun. That would be John's. Gail would have the next biggest, and I the next. Ethan and Aaron would get the two small guns. We would have a rule. No one could spray water on John. Easter morning, Ethan and Aaron helped me set up the colorful toys on our sunny deck. Aaron went in to fill the guns with water before we did the big reveal. She returned with the dreadful news that the big gun leaked. <laughs> She offered to share a gun with Ethan and give her dad her tiny gun. When I showed John his previously impressive gun and its unfortunate steady drip, he replied with a sigh, story of my life. <laughs> he wasn't expressing self-pity, he never did. He was acknowledging and accepting yet another unexpected challenge. With steely determination, John mastered that faulty gun and was the only dry one at the end of the battle. Through <laughs> example, John taught us so much by the way he lived his life in this wonderful world. He was blessed with a sharp mind and a strong body, which he put to good use because of his open and kind heart and grateful spirit. They remained intact as he weakened. From John's perspective, every day, everything, and everybody had possibilities. I am blessed to be a part of his family, but too briefly his neighbor. John made me feel special that he would have offered the same warm treatment to any new friend he was meeting for the very first time. Rest easy, dear boy, who became the finest of men, but keep us close. We may need you yet. And next, Stephanie Clark will sing What a Wonderful World. And as she sings, you'll probably be able to picture John walking down the streets of this wonderful town.